Wam Shalom, it's your brother Wal Rumya, back with another lesson. Lord willing, it be edifying. I'm gonna start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Wahara Kakodash, Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shah, Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shah, Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shah. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone who taught me this truth, and Shalom to you, Akim and Aqua, that believe and have faith in Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah in these last days. Uh, just praying to be a part of the hopeful elect. Just got another lesson, as you see on the screen, concentration camp known as the Devil's Punch Bowl holds a mass grave of thousands of freed black people in Mississippi. So the same thing they did then, they want to do now. And as you see at the top, the first two words is exactly what they want to do again. So you see what happened not too long ago, man. This ain't been... <laughs> That long ago, man. But let's get to it, man. Just in case somebody don't know about this story that happened to the uh, to the Negroes, man. Concentration camps. People mostly associate the term with Nazi Germany, but historians say it's true. They also existed in America. During the Civil War, authorities in Natchez, Mississippi, forced tens of thousands of freed slaves into camps built in what's known as the Devil's Punch Bowl. Jacob Kittlestad explores this forgotten history this Mystery Monday. Untouched fruit falls to the ground near the banks of the Mississippi River. They talk about there's the most beautiful wild peach groves uh, down in the punch bowl. And researcher Paula Westbrook says, like a peach, the area known as the Devil's Punch Bowl has a pit, a mass grave from the 1860s. Historians estimate that in one year, up to 20,000 freed slaves died in contraband camps below these bluffs. When the slaves were released from the plantations during the occupation, they overran Natchez. And the population went from about 10,000 to 120,000 overnight. So they decided to build an encampment farm at Devil's Punch Bowl, which they walled off and wouldn't let him out. Don Estes is the former director of the Natchez City Cemetery. I just put my own tombstone right there. You see Estes? Learning history spent his life. He says Union troops ordered recaptured black men to perform hard labor. Right down, right here. While women and children were all but left to die in the three punch bowl prisons. Disease broke out among them, smallpox being the main one and thousands and thousands died. They were begging to get out, turn me loose, and I'll go home back to the plantation, anywhere but there. But they wouldn't let them out. The Union Army did not allow them to remove the bodies from the camp. They just gave them shovels and said, bury them where they drop. And I'd really like to show you more of this terrain, but it's just too thick with greenery. These bluffs are also straight down, so not only is it dangerous to navigate, it's still very mysterious back there. It's a bed of alligators and snakes. Uh, it would take Indiana Jones to get back in there at this point. And then you come on up washing away bluffs and it, the devil's punch bowl that has so many people that no one knows how they got killed or when, and they're still down there wasted and even to this day they talk about wild peach trees that come up down there but no one in natchez will eat them because they know what the fertilizer was exploring the unexplained on mystery monday jacob kittlestead wjtv news channel 12. and historians say even now people might discover old skeletal remains after flooding on the mississippi but being on the natchez trace sometimes it our digital pdf black history facts you probably didn't learn in school is full of black stories and facts that aren't usually taught in school. The PDF includes information that is often overlooked in traditional education and history books. The digital PDF can be downloaded and read at your convenience. You don't want to miss out on the chance to uncover the untold black history facts and stories. Click the link in our bio to support BHU. See, as you see, man, what they did to us and uh, this is not forgotten, man. They, it's, a, it's a payback for this. It's a payback for what they did to the children of Israel, man. And they want to do the same thing now. They want to depopulate, man. That's the reason why they did what they did to us, man. I want, I'm trying to kind of watch my words. 
because they monitor these videos very, very heavily now. So, um, yeah, they, that's what they want to do again. They want to depopulate, man. So major events are happening, and I brought this story out, man, just to give our people a little hope, man. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that you believe and have faith in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. All is not forgotten, man. And they have to pay back what they've done to the children of Israel. But we have built this place, man. We have built Babylon the Great, man. As you're going to see in this little story here, what what our people have done, this is just one video out of millions of what the children of Israel have, the children of Israel have contributed to the, to the American society, man. Now check this out. People in the early 1900s relied on burning coal or wood to heat their homes. This method of heating sucked because the heat usually was hottest right in front of the fireplace, which left the rest of the room cold. On December 23, 1919, Alice H. Parker patented the first furnace powered by natural gas that was for homes and offices. Her invention would suck in the cold air and exchange it with hot air. It would then distribute that hot air to the different parks of the home. Her invention was the first to have individually controlled air ducts that would distribute heat throughout the home. Parker played an important role in the development of the central heating systems that keep us warm today. So this is this is the feel I'm in, you know what I'm saying, doing HVAC. And that's amazing that she was able to do that, man. You know what I'm saying? That was amazing for her to do that. What they have now, they call heat pumps. That's what she did, man. She created the first heat pump, man. She created the first heat pump. And that's, that's like I said, that's amazing, man. Back in that time, man. And they've got the credit for it. They made millions upon millions of dollars off what we created. And they, <laughs> and people want reparations, man. Now nah, we want them as our reparations, man. Because as we have served them, it's time for them to serve us. And we continue to contribute, man. That's why I got a couple of little articles, headlines. It says, a black woman is the president of Harvard University for the first time in 400 years, man. So as much as Esau wanted to hold us down and be mean to us and hate, have hatred towards us, they couldn't stop us, man, because we are the children of Israel. 13-year-old becomes youngest, Af youngest African-American to ever be accepted into a medical school, man. Come on, man, 13. 13 years old, man. It says black family close, closes seven-figure real, real, estate it's like I'm tripping real estate deal to recreate modern day Black Wall Street in Mississippi man so they, they close this a seven figure deal which all of it is, is, is over with now you know what I'm saying Jake two thirds of our people don't know but they, and after, after, after all that what was what the Lord has blessed us with they still seek Cesar Borgier man Knowing he don't fit the prophecies, he don't fit the Bible, but they continue to run to their oppressor, man. But you how about Shimmy Alshai? This ain't this ain't them, but it's just an illustration, man. To see all the things that we contributed to America and what they've done to us, they still run to him, man. And I say the water you how about Shimmy Alshai for waking us up to this truth. Because we can see clear as day what times we in and who did this to us, man. And they have to pay. They have to pay back what they have done to us, man. And the Lord is a balanced power. So what they did to us, they're going to get back. They're going to get it back, man. They're going to get double, though. This is uh, Psalms 35, and I'm going to start at verse 1. It's a Psalm of David. It said, Plead my cause, O Yahweh, by Shem Yahushah, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. And Yahweh, Yahweh by Shem Yahushah, is going to do the is going to do the work for us, man. He's going to fight against our enemies, man. So it's not time for us to 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 try, try to fight and do all that madness that um Chief Ephraim is calling for, man. No, man, you ain't a servant of the Lord, man. You're not listening to the Spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, man. Because that's what we pray for, man. It says, verse two, it says, take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. That's what we have the Lord for, man. If 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 Yahweh by Shem Yahushua is our savior, he's he, we supposed to wait on him, man. The scriptures clearly tell us to do that, man. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Draw out thy draw out also 
the spirit and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto, unto my soul, I am thy salvation. And the Lord is saying that to our spirits, man, the man of the Lord, man, the true worship of Yahweh by Shem Shah, man. The Lord is our salvation, man. He says, let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. So that's what Esau is doing, man. They did it, what, in the 1800s? Later, late 1800s? And they're trying to do the same thing they did, did then. They're trying to do now, man. That's why they have all these camps and shit set up, man. He has the same playbook. He sticks with it. He doesn't change. He sticks with the same playbook. And this is all you have about Shem Yahweh Shah, but he made us known to these things, man. We have become Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah's friend to understand and know what he is doing in the earth. Verse five, he says, let them be, ch be chaff before the wind and let the angel of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah chase them. See that? We don't have to do anything, man. The Lord is going to chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah persecute them. The Lord is going to judge them, man. We have to sit back and do the will and do the work of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, man. We have to do we have to do exactly what the scriptures say, man. It says, for without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit. And that's what they did in that in that um in the video you seen, man. The devil's punch bowl. And it's and it's, and it's a clear indication who was the who was the devil then, man. It says, which with which without cause they have digged for my soul. And that's what they did, man. If you died, they gave you a shovel. They wouldn't even let you come up the hill, man. Where you died, they said dig uh, dig a pit right there where they died at, man. I mean, dig a grave where they died at, man. The Confederate Army would not let the the, um, the the men, women, and children come up, man. He says, let destruction come upon come upon him at unawareness. So the Lord is going to destroy them, man, and it's coming, man, very very soon. Man. Everything is coming to pass right before our eyes, man. He says, and let us uh, and let his net. That he have he had catch himself into that very destruction, let him fall. See that? So they got these camps and everything set up, man, for the children of Israel, man. And you know what I'm saying? For um for, for these um less fortunate Edomites, he had to set up for them too, man. But they won't the aim is towards the children of Israel, man. Because he see his, he see his destruction coming. He says, and my soul shall be joyful in Yahweh by Shem Shah. It shall rejoice in his salvation. See that? We're not just we're not supposed to try to save ourselves. We're supposed to let the Lord save us, man. Because when you try to take up arms and try to do this and do that, you're taking away from the Lord's authority, man. You're taking away from his, his purpose, man. To save us, man. This is Psalms 9, and I'm going to drop down to verse 11. It says, Sing praises to Yahweh by Shem Shah, which dwelleth in Zion. See that? The Lord dwells amongst us, man. Declare among the people his doings. And that's what the men of the Lord are, 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 are prophesying to you. The doings of the Lord, man. What the Lord is going to do, man. It says, When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of of the humble. See that? We can constantly send out our prayers, man, to the Lord, man. And the Lord is hearing us, man. That's why this place is crumbling faster than we could ever know. Well, they got, um, um I seen a little while ago, where they had a video where they, they, they're, they're subliminally telling you some major is supposed to happen tomorrow, man. 11 3, all the way to uh, 11 5, I think. I mean, not saying that we don't, ain't put no date or no time or anything, but Esau, he has to tell you before he does it, man. So it's, it's our job to see what he's doing and to warn the sheep, man, just to be prepared, man. Because they continue to keep saying the T, the T word, you know what I'm saying? It's going to happen in America. So, you know what I'm saying? If they telling you, if they keep telling you and telling you and telling you, like the um, the FBI agent, um, the head of the FBI had a, um, he had a, um, uh, the meeting with the Congress today for three hours, man. And that's all he was talking about, man. So we have to be prepared mentally and spiritually for these things that's coming on the earth, man. And they keep saying it because they let all these people in 
to set to set them up to do something, man. So we got to be prepared, man. Um, verse, verse 13, it says, Have mercy upon me, O Yahweh by Shemuel Shah. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. And the Lord's seen what the, what these people are doing to us, man, to this very day, man. He's, he's seeing exactly what they're doing, man. And I, I, I today, man, I had, to, I had to set up a prayer, man. You know what I'm saying? Because dude almost tried to hit me in my dang on truck, man. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know if he was, uh, he looked like, he looked like Issachar, right? But he might have been an Edomite, though. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But I set up a prayer. You know what I'm saying? To just, just calm down, man, because it ain't the time to do nothing out of the way, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to stay on the straight and narrow path, man, because these demons out here heavy, man. They, they trying to get you to go off. Uh, verse uh, 13 again, it said, Have mercy upon me, Yahweh by Shem Shah. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death. See that? The Lord is protecting us. That's the reason why we ain't put to death, man. And, 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 ha and nothing happened to us, man. It's the Lord. He says that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. And that's what we do, man. As men of the Lord, we tell, you know, tell brothers about situations that we, you know what I'm saying, that the Lord did for us, man. We pray for the Lord. He, he brought us out of these situations, man. Like today, I just told you, man, dude almost hit me, man, in the truck, man, trying to, you know what I'm saying, roll rage and shit, man. And then you, you, you know what I'm saying, off the bat, you, you like, man, you know, you get already get mad because, you know, my motherfuckers ain't paying attention and got heavy demons and shit on them, man. So you instantly get mad. But like I said, I mean, you, you got to set up prayer, man, man, you know what I'm saying, I let the Lord do the work for you, man. And not, not try to do it on your own. It says, I will rejoice in thy salvation. It says, the heathen are sunk down into in, in the pit that they made. And that's what's happening, man. That's what's finna happen to them. What, they finna, what they're planning to do to us is finna happen to them. It says, in the net which they hid is their own feet taken. See that? Their own feet are finna be taken in the, in the plans, in the... And the things that Esau has set up, their feet are finna be taken in there, man. They're finna be caught in there, man. Yahweh by Shemi Shah knoweth, no, it's like it. Yahweh by Shemi Shah is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Higiyan Salah. So basically, they're finna be taken in all the things that have set up for us, man. Because you got major pestilences coming, man. Major diseases coming. Famine is coming. All hell is about to break loose, man. As the war continues to, to grow in, in the Middle East, these things are going to pick up here, man. Because they ain't going to be, you know what I'm saying, once that war really starts to pop off, ain't no gas going to be coming. No food is going to be coming. None of the things that you are accustomed to having are going to be here. 17, it says, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forgot Yahweh by Shem Shai, man. See, these nations don't think the Lord is coming. Esau especially, he don't think the Lord is coming. He don't think Yahweh by Shem Yahweh is on his way. He thinks he is, he's orchestrating World War III, man. And we know it to be the Battle of Armageddon, man. The Lord's judgment. Man. But he thinks he's setting up the World War III, bringing his NWO, crashing the dollar. That's his playbook, man. That's what he thinks he's, he's, he's accomplishing. But he's accomplishing your how by Shem Shah's plan, man. This is Psalms um, 73. In verse 1, it says, Truly power is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart, man. So those of a clean mind that believe and have faith in your by Shem Shah, the Lord is good to us, man. He says, But as for me, my feet were um, almost gone. My steps had well not sl slipped. For I was envious of the of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And sometimes my people, they they get um they get caught up in, in the materialistic things that Esau has, man. Getting the beans, getting these clothes, getting these shoes, necklaces and chains, uh, having a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? They get caught up in, in, in these things, man. But waking up to this truth, we we know how these things end, man. We know how this movie is going to end. We know the credits. We've seen the credits. 
and we are in them. We've written in the laws of the um, in the book of life, Lord willing. You know, I ain't doing to the end, man. We'll be written in that book of life, man. He says, for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm, man. So they, they don't look like they're getting punished yet. And they have everything in control, but they're finna slip, man. They're finna slip. He says, they are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. See, Esau has everything in control, man. All the, the whole earth. This is his kingdom, man. The Chinese, he has the, the, the so-called Africans, the Russians, the Americans. Everything is in his hands, man. But they're finna slip, man. They're finna slip. He says, therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness like, what's like it? He says, they have more than heart could wish. And they do have everything, man. They, they want everything, man. The, they have personal islands, man. Personal chefs and palaces and everything you, know, you, you can imagine, man. They have it. Their power is firm in the earth, man. Nobody's coming against them. And I'm speaking of the elite. Nobody is coming against them, man. They can do whatever they want to do. The power is in their hands. But they're finna slip because they, they thought the Lord wasn't coming. And the Lord going to catch them <laughs> unaware. He's going to catch them unaware. What was that? Uh, verse 7, it says, Their eyes stand with fatness, they have more than heart could wish. And they do, man. They do to this very day. He says, verse 8, it says, they are, they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. So when ha something happens to, to anybody else besides them, they they say they, they blow it off, man. Ain't nothing wrong with them. You know what I'm saying? They, they can take it. You know what I'm saying? As you see in the, in the, um, over there, in, you know what I'm saying, in the Middle East, you see what's happening to the people, man. They care nothing about them people, man. They've been oppressed for, you know what I'm saying, um, a couple, you know, I don't know how long, I can't tell you off the top of my head, but they've been oppressed and they speak, they speak um, wickedly concerning oppression, man. So they don't care about nobody else, but only them. They're the only ones. They, they, get the simp uh, they get the sympathy card. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. See that? They talk about they talk about the Lord. You know they say they don't think the Lord coming. They talk about the people of the Lord. They the, the Lord is not going to um, protect them. He's not going to do any, anything to to make us not uh, kill them and and rape, rob, and murder them. They don't think the Lord is going to stand up for the children of Israel, man. And that's where they finna slip, man. The Lord is setting them up in a great trap because it's their time, man. The rulership is done. Dropping down to verse 15, it says, If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, I was painful. It's like it, when I thought to know this, to uh, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of power. Then I understood their I therein. So the Lord blessed us to come into this truth, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, to see the end of our enemies, man. That's why he woke us up to this truth, to repent and return to him. And now as we came into this truth, we went to the sanctuary of the Lord, which is the scriptures. Now we see their end. Now we see the end of the movie. We see why we in this, this, uh, this situation, we the lowest on the bottom, and we see the, 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 the rulers of the society, we see their end. Verse 17, it says, until I went into the sanctuary of power, then I under, then understood I their end. See that? He says, surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou casted them, them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? And that's what's going to happen to them, man. They don't, they don't got a clue what's going to happen. But in a moment, everything gonna be taken away from them, like they never had it. He says they are utterly consumed with terrors, and, and the Lord is finna terrorize them, man. As a dream, when one awaketh, so O Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, 
when thou wakest, thou shalt despise their image. So the Lord is going to despise their image. And let's get a little deeper than that, man. Let's make it a little clearer than that. So the Lord, when the Lord returns, he's going to utterly waste them, man. He says, a New Living Translation, it says, when you arise, O Yahweh Bashim Yahushah, you will laugh at their silly ideas at a person, as a person laughing at a dream in the morning. See that? The Lord is going to laugh at what they're trying to do on the earth, man. These silly ideas of, you know what I'm saying, putting a chip in everybody. You know what I'm saying? Putting everybody in these camps. So the Lord is going to rise and destroy their, all their ideas, man. Everything they had to set up and been trying to accomplish for many years, the Lord is going to throw it down in a moment. Good news translation. He says, they are like a dream that goes away in the morning. See, they're going to be chased out of the world, man. They're going to go away as a dream in the morning. <laughs> You'll never see an Edomite after the first thousand years. When you rouse yourself, oh, you howl by Shimei Osha, they disappear. And that's what's going to happen to them, man. What they've done to the children of Israel, they're going to disappear. And this does say you how about Shimei Shah. This is thus say you how about Shimei Shah, man. This is Job 20. And let me get to it. I'm going to start at verse. Let me get to it. Job 20, and I'm going to start at verse. Start at verse 4. It says, Knowest thou not? This of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, man. It's short. So they they they, they ruled for a little bit of time, man. Just two days, man. Going into the third day, man. They, they ruling, man. But they finna be violently taken down, man. Taken out of power. And the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. Though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reacheth Unto the clouds, see, they're very high, man. Though they got everything hearts desire, they have armies in control of. He says, though the excellency, excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reaches unto the clouds. Yeah, they high, man. He said, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung, man. So they don't reach the heights nobody would ever reach, man. In their society, I'm speaking of. They have reached the heights Nobody in their society can reach, man. And they're going to be taken down <laughs> in one hour. He says, they which have seen him shall say, where is he? See that? They're going to be chased out of the world, man. And shall fly away as a, he said, he shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Esau's done, man. Yea. He shall be chased away as a vision of the night. We just read in uh, Psalms um, 73 and 20. They're gonna be, it's gonna be, they're gonna be they're gonna disappear. Their end is gonna be violently, man. Because they, they love the blood, man. Esau is gonna have a violent end. And that's by the hands of Yahweh by Shem Shah, man. So the Lord made known to us the end, man. We just read that. That was through the Spirit, man. He made known to us the end. When we went into the sanctuary, was this word, man. And he made known to us his end. This is um, Psalms, uh, Job, Salakia. Job 27 and verse 19, it says, The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He opened his eyes, and he is not. That's plain, man. The rich man speaking of Esau, man. His society, man. He reached the heights in his society that through his technology, he, he has reached his riches. He has reached heights that only he could accomplish, man, because this is his time. So that's why we know this is talking about him. He's the rich man. He says, terrors. Let me read 19 again. It says, the rich man shall lie down but he shall not be gathered. He opened his eyes and he is not. He's going to be taken out of power, man. Terrors take hold of him as waters. 
a tempest stilleth, stilleth him away in the night. <laughs> the east wind carrieth him away and he departeth. And as a storm hurleth him out of his place. So he's going to be taken out of here violently, man. For power shall cast upon him and not spare. I can't get a little plan of that, man. The Lord said, he says, for power shall cast upon him and not spare. That's plain. He hold, he hold fame free. He hold fame flee out of his hand. Men shall clap their hands at him and hiss, uh, hiss him out of his place. And we're going to clap our hands at him, man. He did it to us. So he's going to get the same thing done to him. And it goes right here, make it a little clearer. It says, but everyone jars at him and mocks him. That's what we're going to do to him, man. Same thing he said when he, uh, in, uh, with Psalms 30, 137, it said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation of it. It was mocking us, man. Good news translation. He says, the winds howl at them as they run. <laughs> They're going to be chased out of the world, man. Frightening them, frightening them with destructive power. Woo! With destructive power, man. Yahweh by Shem Al Shai have made known to us, man. He have made known to us, man. You believe and have faith in Yahweh by Shem Al Shai, just be patient, man. Hold on, man. The Lord is going to do great work for us. Hold on, man. Don't, man, don't, don't do nothing out of the ordinary, man. Stay in his faith. Stay on the straight and narrow path. The Lord gave it to us, man. Stick with this truth, man. Because it's going to get a little rocky, man. It might look like you ain't going to make it, but the Lord wanted us to be like that, man. And that's why we continue to build up our faith. Because it's going to, like I said, it's going to get rocky, man. But the faith is going to be built up and you're going you're gonna to be glad that you took this truth serious. You believe, you had faith. And the Lord going to show you his power, man, on our enemies. This is Obadiah 1. In verse 10, it says, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. That's plain. They're going to be cut off forever for what they've done to the children of Israel, man. Cut off forever. I could read, you know, you can read a little bit more of that, but. I don't want to make the lesson too long. But what they've done to us, man, it was violent what they've done to us. Man. Just imagine being down in a, in, in, down in a pit, man, alligators, all type of shit down there, and you can't get out. There ain't people getting sick. It's the same thing they want to do now, man. But we see their end, man. We see their end. Now, this is uh, Psalms 137. And I'm going to just drop down. Uh, um, I don't think I'm about reading. I'll just read uh, 7. It says, Psalms 133 and 137. And uh, drop down to verse 7. It says, Remember, O Yahweh by Shem Yahushah, the children of Edom, in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. See that? They was mocking us. They was hissing at us, man. They clapped their hands at us. His old daughter of Babylon, who art that slaka, who art to be destroyed? Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. See that? So we're going to reward you as you served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. That's plain, man. So what you've done to us, man, is going to happen to you, man. And a beautiful part about it, <laughs> we get the last lick. So they got the first lick, but we got the we get the last lick. And you know, back in the day, you you know what I'm saying, you was kids and shit. You get you somebody you get in a fight with your cousin or something, they get the first one and then you want to get the last lick. We're <laughs> gonna get the last lick, man. <laughs> this is uh first John five, and I just get the point of four, it says for whatsoever is born of power overcometh the world. See that? 
We're finna overcome the world, man. That's the point of this truth, man. Overcoming the world, man. Believing and having faith in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Doing the work, man. Believing. It says, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. That's what's going to overcome the world, man. Our faith. That's what overcomes the world, man. The world we living in, you know what I'm saying, is our faith, man. We go on the highways, you go on the highways and byways because you got faith. You, you get lessons and study because you got faith. You pray to the Lord because you got faith. And that's what's going to overcome the world, man. When these other people looking at Cesar Bourgeois, calling out Jesus and all these Allah, Buddha, all that shit, man. We're going to be calling out Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, man. And our faith is going to overcome the world, man. So Lord willing was edifying. I'm going to end it there. Shalom. Shalom.